you are our father and you have no God except you and today once again we are here to exalt you to worship you to have fellowship with you mighty God and we thank you for everything that you have done for us and once again today we are with expectant hearts that you will do mighty things in our lives you will change our story you will heal us you will set us free from the bondage of darkness you will restore us, you'll give us victory over every situation. That the word that you've set forth for this day, since we started this service, mighty Father, will change the lives of your children wherever they are, wherever they are watching us from. For everyone that has trusted that today, our God will do something. I know you will do something in their lives. You will meet them, you'll bless them, you'll heal them. I pray that this moment, the Holy Spirit, I welcome you once again. That the word you're going to share, you'll visit each one of your children wherever they are. And you'll open their minds. That this word will be conceived in their minds and be planted in their hearts, mighty Father. And it will bear fruit for the glory of your name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We bless your name and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I welcome you this time once again. We thank the Lord. Uh, for his faithfulness and God still remains to be God I don't know what you're going through there are people who are going through joyous times this hour and there are people who are also going through 
pain, people are going through challenges, but that does not change the fact that God is still God. And I pray that wherever you are, today's service will bless you, today's service will lift you up, and not just for your sake, but it will also enable you to have a closer walk with God, and that your life will be filled with great joy, with great peace, and great trust in God Almighty. Hallelujah. Welcome once again from wherever you are, wherever you are watching us from, in whatever situation you are in, some of you could be in tears, some of you could be listening, and you're still doing other things, but I know God will meet you at your points of need wherever you are. Distance is not a barrier, and you will do what he's able to do when you're in a sanctuary, any place. He's able to do even when you're far away. Hallelujah. Today we're having a teaching. Um, it's, it's a teaching to encourage and also to let us look at our life again. Uh, and uh, the topic is just everyday victory. Everyday victory. Everyday victory. Uh, currently in the world, we are going through a lot of things. And as we are growing, as life happens, we hear many things. And the great, uh, uh, what do we call them, motivational speakers, you know, they always say that every day must count. Every day you must do something that uh, is victorious, something that is great, something that is moving you closer to your destiny or closer to your goal or yeah closer to your goal every day and actually even in in the in the believers world our life every day should be moving us closer and closer to god and closer and closer to the end of times where, when you go to heaven so every day that we live our life should be moving us closer and closer to god everything we do should be taking us to the next level of perfection because when you receive christ today it is a new beginning and in this new beginning we grow as paul says once you are a baby in the faith and you're supposed to grow up to full maturity into the perfection of jesus christ praise the lord and every day victory does not come as easily as we always say as believers you know in as much as we walk by faith as a believer that victory does not just come it requires effort it requires intentionality it requires strength praise the lord so there are few things that we need to consider for us to have victorious our uh, a victorious life every day a victorious day every day praise the lord and number one number one thing that we should always remember it is necessary that you acknowledge and you know you understand that every in every day you can either win or lose or you can either succeed or fail praise the lord so when you wake up in the morning these two things are in the table either su success and failure and each of them will be the outcome of your day you either finish your day successful or you finish your day you have failed and when you put that into consideration every day you are able to plan intentionally you are able to make decisions intentionally on how you want your day to end you know i was i was looking at this i was comparing if if you have 50 things to do in a day and you wake up let me use my life as an example i'm a mother i'm a career woman uh, I am a minister. I have many responsibilities to do. If I have my responsibilities to do, let me just take being a mother. You know, the kids have to go to school. There's cleaning to be done. There's washing to be done. There's cooking to be done. There's, you know, organizing, arranging, and things like that. If I have all those things to do on a very busy day, and I wake up at 11, by the time I am closing my day, I am sure I will not have even reached half. And not just, not just reaching half, you become so overwhelmed because one, you are sure if you wake up at 11, if kids were to go to school by 7, they are already late or they didn't go <laughs> because you didn't wake up to prepare them if their kids to be prepared. So most probably they never went to school if they are those who completely depend on you to prepare them. 
then they didn't have breakfast. By the time the day is ending, you are frustrated, you have not done what you're supposed to do, you are frustrated and you're carrying something forward to the next day. And it, when, when I know like every day, I can either win the day or succeed in the day or fail in the day. It enables me to plan. So I, I automatically know that if I want this day to be successful, I have to wake up early. I have to put my plan down. What will I do first? What can someone else help me to do? What is it that requires my utmost attention? Praise the Lord. So acknowledging the fact that a day can either be successful or can either end in failure is not working. Is not, um, Walking without faith is not walking without faith, praise the Lord. So knowing this enables you to plan every day. As in Luke 14, verse 28, there's somebody who's going to build a house. And, and the Bible tells us, Jesus was giving an illustration. He was saying, if somebody is going to build a house, he will sit down, look at the costs, look at what it takes, and plan it and see if he's able to achieve that. And so that... He does not plan on something, yet he does not have the resource. After a short while, the house will remain there unfinished, and people will laugh at you. It is the same thing in our lives every day. So knowing that this is what I have to done, do, I have done in the day, do I have what it takes to do it today? What is it that I can be able to do? And you do it, and your day will be victorious. Praise the Lord. And even as, as, uh, as we are moving in every single, in our journey of life, you want to pray, you want to be victorious in your prayer life, you want to be victorious in your family life, in your career life. Every, you, knowing that it can either end in success or end in failure enables you to focus. If you want to succeed, there are steps you have to follow. If you want to succeed, there are things you have to do, there are things you cannot do, there are things you have to change. There are things you have to live. There are things you have to embrace. And making those decisions every day will lead us to success. Praise the Lord. Number two. The second thing is apply wisdom every day. Wisdom. Wisdom is a very rare, it's a very rare gem. Praise God. And um, it is actually, you know what, you know the right thing to do. It's actually knowing the right thing to do knowing how to do it not just doing it doing it right and not just doing it right doing it the right way in the right place and if it involves people with the right people or for the right people praise the lord so wisdom is uh, a very big element in our in our work of life every, every day, day and especially day. believers i want us to go to proverbs chapter 8 uh, Proverbs chapter 8. And if you want to know about the character of, of wisdom, uh, just put a note that you go and read the entire of Proverbs chapter 8, chapter 9, and chapter 10. The entire of Proverbs chapter 8, Proverbs chapter 9, and Proverbs chapter 10. Um, it's, uh, it, I, I was surprised that wisdom is, addre is addressed as a she in the Bible. Uh, a point to note so let us read uh let's do from verse 12 i want us to do from verse 12 to verse 17 and then we'll do 32 to 36 this is what it says from verse 12 i wisdom now this is wisdom speaking i wisdom live together with good judgment i know where to discover knowledge and discernment all who fear the lord will hate evil therefore i hate pride and arrogance corruption and perverse speech Common sense and success belong to me. Mm -hmm. Common sense, which is not common, eh? Common sense and success belong to me. Insight and strength are mine. Because of me, kings reign and rulers make decrees. Rulers lead with my help and nobles make righteous judgment. Verse 17. I love all who love me. Those who search will surely find me. Praise the Lord just that between verse 12 and verse 14 verse 12 and verse 14 the character of wisdom has been explained to us that if you have wisdom wisdom itself wisdom herself 
it lives together with good judgment good judgment as i've told you if i wake up at 11 you know you can assume sometimes we tend to assume i'm not answerable to anyone this is my house i'm not answerable to anyone uh, you know i i can do things the way i want to do okay it is okay you're not answerable to anyone but is it actually the right thing that you're doing or is it the right culture that that you are embracing so wisdom and good judgments live together and wisdom knows where you will discover knowledge and discernment and these are very key things in the life of a believer you have to have knowledge when you have knowledge you have power you have you know you have the ability to make decisions to move to do what you're supposed to do and then it also says that common sense and success belong to wisdom insight and strength praise the lord so as we are looking for for common sense when you have wisdom common sense automatically belongs to you praise the lord so when you have wisdom because it, it gives you good judgment it gives you knowledge it gives you discernment it comes together with common sense it comes together with success when you apply wisdom every day you think you know you think about every decision you make every day concerning your life concerning the the success that you want concerning the outcomes that you want you will never go wrong praise the lord because that is what wisdom brings that is what actually wisdom means so before you make any decision concerning where you want to be you think about those decisions you you look at the big picture you you look at the bigger picture you know sometimes i i love using the example of uh though sometimes we had a dis a, a, a disagreement um we had a disagreement uh in church and you know every everyone knows you know a mistake happened and everyone knows this person is the one who has done this mistake and your immediate reaction is to reprimand they have them punished and i remember that time pastor said calm down calm down sometimes you behave as a fool it's not being foolish it is using wisdom because had everyone reacted based on that mistake the person most probably will have been killed if not killed will have ended up killing themselves because as believers honestly we are even harsher than the police in this country uh-huh believers are are very harsh than even the policemen of this country if for example you enter church you are a lady and you have dressed skimpily the way you will be handled by the believers in that church you will die a thousand deaths by the you be, before you even come together in your mind and realize that your dressing is the problem you're already dead believers are so harsh but the point is before you make that decision before you judge we have had many stories there was a story of a drunkard he went to church and uh, i think his phone rang in church according to the story and everyone was very harsh and very harsh and he just stood up he was going to look for salvation that he wanted his life to be changed but the people who are to embrace him to you know to show love their immediate reaction made him get out of that place he went back to where he used to drink and they welcomed him and they treated him well he spilled alcohol in that you know in that as part of drinking and the waitress was there can we help you don't worry we can wipe this the glass is not a problem are you okay i hope it, it did not cut you you know and he was asking him why should i go back to church honestly and there is no love so but if people delayed to make judgments if you thought through why would that phone ring in church and you look you'll find that person is a is a new believer is a, is a visitor it is upon you to talk to them in a loving in a kind way and as you make that decision of dealing with this person kindly you give them an opportunity of coming once again and they will always remember that when i went there i did a mistake they know it is wrong but i was handled with love so every day wisdom dictates that we are able to make decisions you look at the bigger picture because lo wisdom looks ahead wisdom looks ahead the decision you make today what effect will it have in the future what effect will it have in your life in your children's life in your community everywhere 
So as, as you apply wisdom every day, it enables you to drift towards success more than failure. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three. This is a, a weakness of very many people and especially believers who have been, who have walked in the journey of faith for a long time. Who believe, um, you know, they have been in this journey for a very long time. Number three, do not think of yourself highly than you should. Praise God. Do not think of yourself highly than you should. Do not think of yourself highly than you should. Most believers, after they have walked in this journey of faith for a long time, for a long time, according to them, they think themselves, they put themselves in a level that is higher than themselves. They think of themselves highly than they should. They imagine they can never fall, they can never stumble. They imagine if they have to do something, it must succeed because you have been in faith for a long time. Hallelujah. So you're walking by faith. Your faith has grown. Your faith has matured. And you believe that um, everything you do because you have been in the faith for a long time must be successful. Is successful. Actually, it's not much. It's successful. Automatically, that is what you believe in. And thinking of yourself highly than you ought to is actually pride. That is pride. And what does the Bible say about pride? God does what? God resists the proud and he elevates the, the humble. So when God is resisting you, definitely you're going down because you're supposed to be working with God. God is supposed to be working with you, through you, and working with you in the journey every day. So if this person who's supposed to work with you, who actually is the reason behind your move, is the reason behind your everyday life, is now fighting against you, and you cannot fight God and succeed, automatically you have done what? You have failed. And one thing people do not know, that if you think of yourself highly than you should, already you have put yourself as a target. You, you put yourself as a target in the sense that you you'll never get prepared. You do not take precaution because you assume that you know. You assume that you will win. So you will not take precaution. And by not taking precaution, you let your guard down. You will be brought down. Praise God. I want to imagine. I know it is, uh, I, 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 I know it is a victory story in the story of David and Goliath. But had Goliath not, not thought of himself highly than he should, David would not have beaten him. The issue, <laughs> my thinking. Because when he saw David, when he saw David, in fact, he, he, he did not even prepare to fight. He was just looking at this small boy, th th this small thing. If soldiers have not come, what about this small thing? And he was continuing to talk and David was preparing to, to fire a stone. And before he knew it, the stone hit him on the head. But had he, had he stopped thinking of himself higher, he would have seen the stone coming. He would have dodged, I want to imagine. But it is the same thing that happens. When you think of yourself higher than you should, you let down your guard. It happens. Even if you're going to fight and the person that you're going to fight is very big and they already imagine that you cannot do anything. You cannot do anything. You will beat them. Mark my words, you'll beat them. Because they, they already know that they have won. So their guard is down. They are not even cautious that you can hit them. They don't imagine ah, this small thing, this short, this short girl. As they're still thinking the way you are so small and so tiny. You have fought them because they are not prepared. And that is what happens. So when, when you're walking in your journey every day and you want victory, do not think of yourself highly. Nobody is above error. Nobody is above mistakes. But if, 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 if you look at your life intentionally, knowing that there are places you can and there are places you can't, victory once does not mean that it will always end in victory. Victory once does not mean that it will always end in, in victory. The next victory will always depend 
on what you do after this first one. Praise God. And I remember Pastor always tells us that uh, he used to tell us that we, we are not able to move forward because we dwell in what we have already seen that we have overcome. So you dwell there. You have been able to fast for three days. So you, you look at yourself as an expert. You have not done anything. Praise God. Let's read Romans. Um, uh, let me, let's read Galatians chapter 6 verse 3 and 4. Um, Galatians chapter 6 verse 3 and 4. It says, if you, if you think you are too important. Okay, this was about helping someone. To help someone. Uh, the NIV says that if you think that you are too important than you should be, you are only fooling yourself. You are only fooling yourself. Romans chapter um, Romans chapter 8 verse 3. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verse 3. What does it say? It says, It's not Romans chapter 8, it's chapter 12, sorry. It's chapter 12. Verse 3, it says, Because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this morning, this was Paul speaking, don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given each one of us. Praise the Lord. So, the problem with uh, thinking of yourself highly than you should is it gives you that sense of, of pride. So if you're a believer, already God is resisting you. And number two, it puts you at a state of vulnerability because most of the time, your guard is always down. And I always tell people, if, if for example, you are running away from a particular, not running away actually, but you want to change from a particular uh, a particular habit or a particular character let's say for example you are you are you are under a process of uh, recovering from maybe alcohol or drug addiction by virtue that you have overcome does not mean that you can never go back there so if you keep exposing yourself imagining that i used to be a drunkard and i overcame so even if you are aware there is alcohol even if you imagine that even sipping cannot do anything to you you'll go back and the tragedy of the matter is it will be worse than what it was before praise god so evaluate yourself evaluate yourself and see what you can see what you can do know your strengths and work focus on that we are growing every day today you will succeed tomorrow work on it better and better because the things that even bring believers down are not big things very small things very small things that paul refers to as sin that so easily entangles they're so minute but they easily entangle you and make you fall praise the lord number four number four for everyday victory avoid areas of weaknesses identify things that make you go off track identify things that make you go off track and when you identify them there are things you can avoid avoid them praise god there are things that you can avoid avoid them as much as you can avoid them you may you do not just avoid that it will come and then i will avoid you make prior plans on how to avoid praise god you make prior plans and you make decisions you stand by those decisions to, you know to work against those weaknesses for example uh, you want you want to improve on your prayer life you know if you pray by the bed if you kneel down by the bed if you kneel down by the bed and you want to pray for two hours by the end of 30 minutes you're inside your blanket either in bed or on the floor That is, that is, that is true. You, you know, you will be kneeling. Next, you will start having an image. I think it's just an imagination that you know you are feeling tired and you will lean on the bed, 
and before you know it you start realizing that you're feeling a lot of you know it's cold you know you start feeling cold even if it's due you know you start feeling cold and you'll draw that blanket to your legs and the next moment it is on your shoulder and the next moment you are snoring when you you wake up you'll wake up four hours later yet you are to pray after two hours and you have not actually prayed so it is your you it it always happens it always happens what do you do you pray away from your bed i even realize this kneeling people sleep when they are kneeling in fact people sleep when they are kneeling pray they sleep zaidi so those things that are weaknesses you identify them and you intentionally make a decision not to do them and you take all precaution that is needed we 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 are we are looking at i was looking at these phones that we have currently um in aspect of the digital being digital in our generation we have phones whichever it is iPhones whichever brand android and all that there is somewhere there is somewhere in the settings there that you can look you can see you can check how much time you have spent on 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 any of those applications or on any of those applications any application be it contacts be it how much time you have spent that is somewhere that you are able to to see so you can imagine if you look at that place and it tells you accumulatively you have been on this apps for 8 hours and i am very sure those 8 hours majority of us it is not on calls it's either on it is purely on social media so 8 hours is actually a third of your day a third of your day so if you woke up like me at 11 and the next and another 8 hours i was on social media actually what did i do because that how many hours are those if the day i assume my day starts at 6 6 by 11 those are like 5 hours 5 hours plus another 8 that's 13 hours we are supposed to have 24 hours i have a balance of like 11 hours in those 11 hours i'm supposed to be asleep they say eight let me take at least six whatever remains of four hours or five hours what can you do nothing nothing completely nothing so as you as you as you look the current generation of phones as you look you are able to know how many hours you have spent on that on those digital platforms every application if you have even gone to the messages you still you you've spent two minutes on the message one minute on whatsapp five hours on facebook 10 hours on all that so it is upon you to make a decision when you look at it critically how do you spend eight hours that is a whole a third of your day a third of your day in a week is how many days it's like one whole day you are just seated in fact in three days eight hours in three days is equals to 24 senior that's one day for six days that is uh, if you convert it, it it is two days so it in short translates that in a whole week two whole days you spend on social media doing nothing just on social media just on social it's not money that you're making it is not souls that you're saving you're just on social media and it it also it will definitely tr translate into the outcomes of your life praise god so when you 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 are supposed to make a decision and 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 actually even those those phones also have settings where you can limit the time where that you will spend on each of those applications for those who don't know so look at it so you also make a decision you can even make a decision if i am in the house and i have things to do my phone will either be off or it will to be silent or it will be somewhere else until i finish what i'm doing what, what i'm doing once i finish i will look at my phone at this time and respond to what i need to respond to act on what i need to act on and don't tell me about emergencies our grandparents used to live there was no phone you used to go to the shopping center to make calls there is no emergency those are excuses we make how many emergencies do we have a day how many how many emergencies do we have a day 
You cannot tell me that, oh, I cannot switch off my phone. What, what if there is an emergency? Okay, so far, how many emergencies have you had so that you can see? Some of you, even from the beginning of the year, have had none. Praise God. So you, you make a decision to work on your weaknesses. If you're, you're this person, if you see anything you will buy, you will buy. When you reach the house, you realize you, ne you never needed that. You avoid working with money. You avoid going to those places if you do not have a plan. Praise the Lord. And number five, know that you can do it. Believe that you can, you can end in success. Believe that success belongs to you. Believe that you can be successful. Why am I telling you to believe? It's because you are not doing it alone. You are doing it by God's power. Praise God. Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. We can do, I can do everything through God who gives me strength. Praise God. And if your, if your strength comes from the Lord, if your ability comes from the Lord, you'll be able to do everything. You are able to plan your day. Because he's not, you know, as I was reading that, uh, uh, let me go back to that proverb so that, I, so that you can see. God is a God of order. Order means he, he plans. Even before he laid the foundations of the earth, he, he looked at the creation he was going to make and imagined they could fail. And he already gave Jesus Christ. Praise God. Um, let's read that chapter 8 from verse 22. It says, The Lord formed me from the beginning before he created anything else. That is wisdom. I was appointed in ages past at the very first before the earth began. I was born before the oceans were created, before the springs bubbled in their waters, before the mountains were formed, before the hills I was born, before he made the earth and fields and the first handfuls of soil. I was there when he established the heavens, when he drew the horizon on the oceans. I was there when he set the clouds above, when he established springs deep in the earth. I was there when he set the limits of the sea so they will not spread beyond their boundaries and when he marked off the earth's foundation i was the architect at his side praise god praise god so according to the story as even wisdom is speaking of of her presence from that from the time when god was make, was creating you can see that god created the earth intentionally he made boundaries. He separated the land and the sea intentionally. He was looking ahead. And he made a plan so that everything fell into place. Animals came after the land has been made. After even the fish were, were, were created. After the ocean has done what? Has been prepared. After the boundaries have been set. Praise God. Even the plants, they, they, they came to life. When water has already been placed and the sun and the moon have already been set in place so that when they come they will be able to do photosynthesis and produce food for them, for themselves praise god so the same way god is a god of order and he has plan in everything he does if he's the power behind you you he will always guide you to make the right decisions to make the right plans and the bible says that our the plans belong to us but it is god who enables them who who fulfills them according to his purpose for us praise the lord so today for, i want to remind you that it is possible to lead a successful life every day in every aspect in every aspect this these points cut across any place that you want to do to have success in your marriage in your business in your relationship with your children you know in your spiritual work uh, as a believer you are able to apply this in every aspect of your life and i believe that if you trust in god and is the strength behind you and is is the one who empowers you as we have been told about the holy spirit in the in the previous session if the holy spirit works in you you will achieve greater things you will lead a victorious life you'll be successful in everything that you do praise god and i pray that from today you'll change you'll be able to change the direction of your life you'll be able to change the outcomes of some things in your life 
and I pray that the Almighty God will bless you and will guide you every day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wherever